Welcome back to the Authentic Christian Podcast, the Campfire Stories Special Edition. And these 10 episodes, we are really sort of elaborating on the short, um, the 10 short films that mm-hmm. each one was more of like a parabolic style teaching where we do a short story, three, four minutes, and we're going to try to apply that. And then we discuss it in longer version in this one. This one is episode seven, and it's called Tearing Out the Last Page. And this is really one that Tucker sort of, you know, wrote, did the voiceover. So, Tucker, tell us about, you know, what's this episode about? Yeah, so this one's really the idea of, I guess, in a sense, Bible authority. Like, who gives us the, uh, you know, the right to change the words of God? Do we have the right to do that, to take away, to add anything? Um, And uh, I guess the idea kind of formed one day. um, I think, I don't know, we were all discussing one day, or we were talking just you know, if you took your favorite book, like let's say Harry Potter, you wouldn't rip out chapter four because like, if you did, like it wouldn't be complete. Yeah. So, um, that was kind of the, uh, the, uh, the brainstorm idea for that. And then I wish there was only four, ch- I mean, I haven't read them, but <laughs> I'm guaranteed there's more than four chapters. <laughs> so <to> big, <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of the idea. It's like, if we wouldn't, if we wouldn't do that too, like, you know, if we're binge watching our favorite show, you wouldn't skip season one, no. you know, because it changed something. So why do we do or that? Or the finale. Or yeah. the finale. Yeah. Like, yeah. So why do we do that with scriptures? You know, yeah. I mean, we're, there's so many people that do that today. So that's kind of the, the idea of it um, yeah. that built the episode. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, you're right. There's so many examples um, that we'll get into later in the episode where, you know, God says this, 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 and this. And then he says like a couple more things, but people cut those out for some reason. They don't want them. I mean, it's like, Wait a minute. Do you think the Bible's the inspired word of God? Well, yes, I do. Well, God said this. Well, I don't like that part. You know, that that's not the right attitude to have, you know? Yeah. And so the story, the Old Testament story that you brought up. Oh yeah, Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that story? I know we're gonna go there and read it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so it's in uh, Jeremiah chapter thirty six. Um Jeremiah the prophet, uh, God told him to write down a message to give to the King Jehoiakim. Okay. Um, so the scribe he ends up getting the message to the scribe and the scribe, um, delivers it to the King. Um, I don't okay. know how detailed you want to yeah, go I mean, to I, before we get there. So 30, uh, Jeremiah 36, Jeremiah was a prophet of God that was sent to basically warn the people, Hey, you need to repent and turn, which is what all the prophets, you know, the new Testament said, look, God was patient. He sent the prophets all day long, telling the people to return to God and they didn't listen. In Jeremiah chapter 36 and verse 2, take a scroll of book and write on it the words that I've spoken to you against Israel, against Judah, against all the nations from the day I spoke to you from the days of Josiah, it's a different king, to this day. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the adversities which I purpose to bring upon them, that everyone may, here's the purpose, turn from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. So God says, I'm writing these messages to the people, hoping that they repent from their sins and turn back to me so God can forgive their sins. Right. Yeah. And so the scroll is read, um, in the entry of the new gate, verse 10, then Baruch read from the book, the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord in the chamber of Gamar, Gamariah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe in the upper court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house in the hearing of all the people. Then the scroll is read in the palace. And finally it makes its way to who? Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim. The king. (laughs) All right. And this is what happens. All right. Uh, Verse 20. They went to the king into the court, but they stored the scroll in the chamber of Elisha, the scribe, and told all the words in the hearing of the king. So they hid the scroll and they read to the king. Then verse 21. The king sent Jehudi to bring Jehudi to bring the scroll, and he took it from Elisha, the scribe's chamber. And Jehudi read it in the hearing of the king and in the hearing of all the princes who stood beside the king. Now the king was sitting in the winter house in the ninth month and had a fire burning on the hearth before him. We have a fire burning on the, not hearth, the ground before us. <laughs> and it's the second month. So, not the ninth. Not the ninth. <laughs> of our so, calendar. Of our calendar, yeah. <laughs> so you have, um, he hears the words of the scroll. It's told to him and he's like, go get the scroll. I want to see it. So they go and get the scroll and they're reading it to the king. And do you think the king likes what he's hearing? No, because what, what does the scroll say? It's basically saying, look, you all are in sin. Repent, turn back to God or else, right? And you're the king. You're like, no, I like being king. I, I want to do what I want to do. Verse 23, it happened when Jehudi had read three or four columns that the king did what? Well, he got the scribes. He took the scribes knife yep. and cut it up 
Yep. And then I burned it in the fire. He cut it with the scribe's knife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the scroll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yet they were not afraid, nor did they tear their garments, the king nor any of his servants who heard all these words. Now, in the Old Testament, whenever you heard that you were in sin or you had some problems, what was one of the customary ways to show repentance? Tear your what? Tear up uh, your clothes. Your, your clothes, shirt, like rent your garments, you know? Yeah. And, the, and the prophet says, rent your heart and not your garments. They'd rent their garments, but not their heart. In this case, they didn't even care about God's word. They cut it up, threw it in the fire, and didn't even show any sort of signs of remorse, right? Yeah. Yet when they were not afraid, okay, verse 25, nevertheless, El Nathan Delai, Delai, that's sometimes Old Testament names, and Gemariah implored the king not to burn the scroll, but he would not listen to them. So he basically doesn't like what God says, and so he does what? He just gets rid of it. And the next chapter says that God was like, oh, I'm sorry for sending you that message. Uh, I apologize. Let me, let me uh, change my message. No. No, no. of course not. No, he, what? he wrote it down again. Yeah, yeah he wrote it down again. <laughs> like, what does this guy think he's going to do? Does he think he's going to, God's going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you wouldn't like that message. I'm yeah. not omniscient or anything. <laughs> yeah. So verse 27. Now, after the king had burned the scroll, uh, Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, take yet another scroll and write on it all the former words that were in the first scroll with Jehoiakim, the king of Judah had burned. And then if you jump down to verse 32, then Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to Baruch, the scribe, who wrote on it at the instruction of Jeremiah, all the words of the book, which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire. And besides, there were added to them many similar words. So it's almost like God's like, you don't like that one? Here's, the, here's that again. And there's some more stuff with it too. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the essence is God says this. He doesn't like it. And so he thinks he can destroy it. Right? Yeah. I mean, do people do the same thing today? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and it just, I don't know, to to personify what what is happening is in my mind, I was just thinking, it's kind of like when you tell your kids, you know, you need to quit doing that and you need to go do this. And they're like, no. And they want to say they're not going to do it or they throw a fit or whatever. I mean, it, my kids don't verbalize a lot yet. Sure. They're still pretty young, but sure. they are doing that. So it's like, okay, well, not only is it that still, but now <laughs> you're also not going to get this yeah. or you're going to have to do that. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, yeah, he he tore it up. Yeah, that didn't matter. Like, no. what, what does that matter? It's like, like, did you just undo what I just said because you said no? No, yeah. you didn't. That's literally like <laughs> that's a good analogy. It's Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, going no. Yeah. Like God yeah. saying, do this. And he's going no. Like a petulant two year old, <laughs> and God is like, okay, does he not know who I am? You're still gonna do that. Yeah, <laughs> and now you're also not going to get dessert yes. or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're and now you're dessert gonna, in this case, yeah. but yeah. The, what I was about to bring up on your nation is still happening. Yeah. Because the only remedy for it is to you to repent and turn. Yeah. But if you're not going to do that, you just tear up the message because you don't like it. I mean, I heard this story, right? Um, we're going to get in, obviously, the plan of salvation because surprise, surprise, that's one of the things where people tear out the last page. Yep. But I remember in a discussion, a preacher told me, I think I've heard this for like, I don't know, I heard it a couple a couple years ago, but a preacher said he was studying with a woman and he was explaining to her the purpose of baptism in the New Testament. And uh, he explained to her, look, man, like the blood of Christ washes away our sins, but you contact the blood of Christ according to God in the New Testament when you're baptized. And she was like, no, the Bible nowhere says baptism saves. And he was like, ma'am, your Bible does say that baptism saves you. Not because of the water, but because it connects you with the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. She's like, my Bible doesn't say that. And he said, ma'am, your Bible says it. And she said, no, it doesn't. And he said, ma'am, can I have your Bible? So she handed him the Bible. And you know what? He opened her Bible to 1 Peter 3.21. And you know what she'd done? It's probably she, ripped, it. she ripped out the page. Oh, wow. So he couldn't find 1 Peter 3.21 in her Bible because she literally ripped out the page because she hated what it said. Yeah. Now, that's like a modern day Jehoiakim story. Like, mm -hmm. did she like what it said? No. So her remedy was what? Not consider, well, maybe what I've been taught doesn't line up with scripture. Therefore, I'm going to change my belief that it, to it, for it to adhere to scripture. Instead, her solution was rip the page out of her Bible, right? Or mark it out. Or what a lot of people do is they don't even, they won't do that. They just ignore it or say that's not what it means. Maybe it's not your, your favorite book or maybe it's not the Jehoiakim story where you you know, you're ripping out the pages, but this stuff is happening. Um, I've only been a Christian. This will be like, this August will be my fourth year being a Christian. Um, but like, I guess this, 
um, episode really hits home because this is like this happened to me. Like I, I, I looked over verses like I wasn't, you know, growing up, you didn't hear certain verses or you, you were taught one sided. Um, not that you knew it. And I don't, I don't think the people had bad intentions behind sure. it, but you know, um, people leave stuff out and like, like, like first Peter three twenty one. I remember the first time I read it, I think it was Bruce, Bruce Hatcher and Megan. And I was like, wow, like it's not because of the water. It's because of what Jesus did, but yeah. it's through baptism. You know, we connect to the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Before it was just like, well, baptism is a, fa- uh, a symbol of yeah. your faith. Yeah. Um, and we just kind of look over things and yeah. it's, it's just such a weird concept where we, we wouldn't do that to our favorite show or anything else. But when it comes to God's word, um, we would, um, which we tried to, we tried to make sure we said that Greek word, right. It was like the, the op- opnustos or the opnustos. Opnustos, yeah. And hopefully we, we said it right. Yeah. But like, if it's, uh, and it's like you said, if, like if, you, if you think we pronounced it wrong, you weren't there 2000 years. <laughs> yeah. Like maybe we did. No, um, it's like if, if this book is given to us by God, um, and it's everything we ever need to know is God breathed. Like that word says, yeah. Um, then we should take, like, we should really pay attention to it. We should really treasure it. Um, I mean, so many times I, you know, I, I'm guilty. I overlook it, you yeah. know, over, you maybe not, you take it for granted, but, um, yeah. When I heard the story of Jehoiakim, it really puts things into perspective. Yeah. Because so, it's happening right now. Yeah, it is. I mean, you talked about, you know, scripture being God breathed. Second Timothy chapter three, verses 16 and 17 says all scripture, that word is like G-R-A-P-H-E, graphy, like holy writings, all right? All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That's that God breathed, all right? And is profitable for doctrine, okay? For instruction, that's doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, in righteousness that the man of God may be sort of, is that what it says? Sort of equipped? No. Mm. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, right? So if you need it, it's in there. Isn't that mm. prego? Is it prego? The pasta sauce? It's like, it's all in there or it's in there. I don't know. I don't know. All right. I don't, <laughs> um, I don't know. Everything you need, it's in there. It's in here, yeah. right? It's in scripture. And so like you think about you look at something in scripture and you say, well, if scripture is there to fully equip me, thoroughly furnish, me into every good work. What happens if I take some of it out? It's not fully there. No, it's yeah. like, uh, I'm like partially equipped, you know, like not totally furnished. Like what if you moved into like a furnished apartment and they had like a couch and like no bed hmm. and you were like, I thought my apartment was furnished. They're like, Oh, well not thoroughly furnished. Like just sort of partly furnished. Yeah. It's furnished. Yeah. It's furnished. Like, look, that's a furnishing. That's a it's furnishing. like, no, I want to, I paid for a fully furnished apartment, not a half furnished, mm-hmm. you know, like, you don't want an apartment with no, with no uh, furniture. Why would you want a faith that's not thoroughly furnished? Like you yeah. want all scripture. You and know? it's okay to question things like yeah. with the intention of finding what it actually says. Like yeah. we, I know we've talked about it many times on the podcast of season one, like Acts 17, the Bereans, yep. they questioned, well, they, uh, no, you're right. yeah, the question, you know, wondered what Paul had read was actually true. Yeah. I mean, Paul had the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, and so they're searching the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul's wondering. preaching and they're like, okay, let me check that. Let me check that. Of course, they had the Old Testament scriptures talking about <laughs> Jesus being the Messiah, you know? Yeah. yeah. But they're checking God's writings to make sure that this man speaking matches up with it. So this, I mean, this whole episode really is just be like, hey, like, um, if we wouldn't do that to, uh, you know, your favorite book and all that, or even the Jehoiakim, it's just to kind of make you think, like, think outside the box, like we talked about. Mm-hmm. Like, is it possible that maybe someone in your life or the people that you're around, like, we're leaving stuff out, like, Maybe, maybe you have been taught wrong. Maybe mm-hmm. something, maybe you're just missing part of it. You know, mm-hmm. um, I was missing a part of it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's a valid message for people who, who are regularly, regularly attending church mm-hmm. or they're not doing it at all. It's for both. Right. I mean, yeah. if you want to think about the concept of, of leaving out the page, that can be, that can be tearing out a page literally, or that can be just not going far enough or not yeah. doing enough or, yeah. mm-hmm. or ignoring certain things. That's really what we're talking about. And, yeah. and, and you see some of that in revelation two and three, some of the churches not yeah. doing everything that they were supposed to be doing. Right. Some yeah. of them suffered mm-hmm. false teachers and other things to be uh, among them. Yeah. Right. So that's an example. What, what Pharaoh's another good example of somebody who's trying to tear out the page, so to speak. Yeah. Right, because what does he do? Yeah, every single time God's word. Moses comes, hey, let him go. This is what we're going to do, and he's like, do that, but change this. Yeah. Like, you're not going to all go, but I'll let I'll let the men go or or the adults, but but leave these groups. Yeah. You know, they're they're trying to change something mm-hmm. about it. Maybe not tearing a page out with a pen knife, mm-hmm. but they're trying to change something. You know, Nadab and Abihu. I mean, I guess you could say yeah. they they tore out a page. Like well, they're they ignored tra- some things. They they went. 
maybe too far or something to that effect. They, it's like they're trying to negotiate with God. Yeah. They're, All those, you yeah. know, it's like, you I mean, you're spot on. You can keep going. I, I just want to throw that yeah, in there. No, it's that's like, it, that's it. they're trying, like God gives them terms and they try to negotiate it. Mm-hmm. Like Pharaoh gives God terms through Moses and Pharaoh's like, let me negotiate. And Moses is like, no, 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 you don't get it. I'm from God. <laughs> yeah. God sent me a message and Pharaoh's like, mm-hmm. yeah, well, but I'm Pharaoh though. He's like, yeah, you know, Egypt that you rule, God spoke into existence. You know, it's the same thing with Nadab and Abihu. Like God gives them regulations on how to worship. And they're like, yeah, we want to do it our way. God's like, that's not how it works. Yeah. You know, and you see that. I mean, we talked about these two words. If you ever hear people talk about exegesis and ice or asegesis, you can get into that argument. We did that on the podcast. <laughs> There's the idea, John 1, 18, it says that Jesus came and declared the father. And that's where we get that word. So Jesus, imagine this, imagine Jesus says, this is what the father's like. And somebody says, no, that's not right. That's not what the father's like. He'd be like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm Jesus. I know what the father's like. I was in his bosom. I declared him. I'm basically making known to him, making known to you what he's like. And they're like, no, 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 that's, that's not what that means though. I know you say that, but that's in a sense, like what we do whenever Mm -hmm. scripture says something, we're supposed to exegete. That's what you can call yourself. You can call yourself an exegete. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at what the Bible says and saying, what do the words say? How does that, what what is it? How do the word, what do the words say? How does that line up with what I think? Because if what you think doesn't line up with what scripture says, then you might be guilty of the other thing, which is called ace, which means into, right? Or ice, whatever. Mm-hmm. Ice of Jesus, let's just say it that way. Ice of Jesus, you're taking what you believe already and you're sticking it into scripture. And you're saying, well, this verse says that, but it must mean this. Or it can't yeah. mean what it says because that doesn't line up with what I think already. So scripture should guide what you think, not you think guides what scripture says. That's that's where you see a lot of people twisting scripture. You know? There's a, a little, I guess, fun fact for behind the scenes. Um this is our uh, MCU a little, small, tiny moment, just like where we <laughs> collided a little cup of wisdom. I mean, the notebook kind of plays a factor in the film series ah, a little I bit. I see what you're saying. Okay, um, okay. So if you've seen a little cup of wisdom in the movie, then the notebook kind of ties in. Um, it's going to play a bigger part later on that you'll see. But uh, is this it? Yeah, it's our funny way of saying it's our little Marvel Cinematic Universe, our little... Like your Easter egg. A little okay. Easter egg. Are you going um, to show it? Is it in here? So in what episode, you- well, in episode nine, it plays a, it'll show in the up. Show end up showing uh, the plan of salvation, which is I thought it was in there. I was gonna oh yeah, it's in okay. there. Okay, all right, you can find. But yeah, it. it's, okay. you know, it's a fun little fact. Um, oh, that is episode nine. Episode episode nine. Spoiler. But yeah, this is a <laughs> way to t- like write down a thought. Um, yeah, but uh, it all kind of like led me back to like Acts seventeen. Like when you do share the truth, mm-hmm. um, these guys Acts seventeen, um, verse six, and when they couldn't could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouting, "These men have turned the world upside down. Have come here also." Um, Jason had received them and they're all acting against the decrees of Caesar saying that there is another King Jesus. Um, so like whenever you stand up for all of the word of God, like people yeah. are going to think you're crazy yeah. and that you are like turning your life upside down in the world. And yeah, because it's not um, the majority. You know, what we talked about in previous episodes on this podcast is that even though the majority say like, well, this baptism couldn't mean this or repentance or this, this or whatever it is, miracles or Holy spirit, any of that, um, like what's important is like what scripture says yeah. and not majority, even if it's the majority of Christian culture. I mean, I'm literally having an email conversation back and forth with a guy in Texas who um, basically emailed us and said, I mean, I'll just be pretty clear. He emailed mm-hmm. and said he wanted to work with the podcast. And I said, well, look, like, you know, in order for us to work with people, we have to line up with them doctrinally because we believe that basically abiding in the doctrine of Christ is important. Yeah. Second uh, John 9. And so he and I started talking and we got to talk about plan of salvation. And I basically said, look, like, you know, a very friendly conversation. I said, you know, if we're teaching two different things about how somebody becomes saved, there's no way we can work together because we work together and I meet somebody and I say, the Bible says you need to repent and be baptized. And he says, no, you don't have to be baptized. And I said, look, ultimately, like you have to let scripture speak. And his, what he said to me was, he said, what you're teaching goes against a majority of major Christian denominations. And I was like, yeah, I know. He was like, are you saying all these people are wrong? And I'm saying, look, I'm saying scripture is right. Yeah. I understand a majority of Christian denominations say that you're saved by belief alone and that, you know, repentance does, some of them say repentance Mm -hmm. saves, but almost all of them say you do not have to be baptized to be saved. And I'm saying, I disagree because scripture says belief and baptism are required. Mark 16, 16. In Acts 2, Peter, they asked Peter what to do. Peter says what? 
repent and be baptized. Why? For the remission of your sins, for the forgiveness of your sins. Acts 22, 16. I asked him, explain these passages to me. Paul has already believed. He's already seen Jesus. All these things. He's prayed for three days. He's repented. And yet Ananias says, arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And I asked this guy, and his response was not, explain this passage to me, explain. His response was, well, I don't believe that because that would basically, that would basically mean that all these people that I know are wrong. That's not a legitimate like response. It shouldn't be, well, it goes against the majority of what people believe. Just like you said, these people are saying you're turning the world upside down. Well, why? Because a majority of the world doesn't believe what you're teaching. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's wrong. You know, if scripture teaches it, bam, I'm with it. And it doesn't yeah. matter if 10 million people if the, what, 7 billion, if 7 billion people told me that I was wrong and the Bible says something else, I'm like, you know what? You may think I'm crazy, but I'm going to stick with this book. You know? Yeah. People cut out things that God has said today, like yeah. baptism yeah. or like taking the Lord's supper each week. Yep. Sometimes they might do it once, once a year yep. or whatever, but yeah. that's not what you see when you read about the church and the, in the new Testament, you see them doing that. Um, some people cut out benevolence and things yeah. like that. Yeah. They, 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 they actually, create doctrine saying you cannot do that, at mm -hmm. least as congregations, yeah. as the church, you can't yeah. do that. Yeah. Or you can't do that to certain people. You yep. can only do that to these people. Yep. Um, some people try to bargain or change the terms on, on other, on other, other things. Sure. That, sure. That God says, whatever. Sure. Uh, acts of worship, et cetera. Sure. Yeah. That that's, that's people cutting out or tearing out that last page. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what we're talking about. They're, yeah. they're, they're getting the same Bible that everybody else is getting yep. and they're reading it and they're coming to a part that goes against something they want to do, like you yeah. said, and they're throwing it away. Yeah. Like that guy said, oh, I don't believe that. What yeah. do you mean you don't believe that? You, you, you said you believed in the Bible. Like, what and do you, you know, mean you don't believe it? You know what's so funny? You're exactly I mean, right. If I, I talk with people a lot that say, you know, well, God is sovereign, therefore this must be the case. If you are watching this and you think God is sovereign, if you really believe that, that means who makes the rules? God. God does. You don't make the rules. So if you say, well, God is sovereign, I don't think he would do that. It doesn't matter what you think he would do. Yeah. God gets to do what he wants to do. That's what it means when it's God is sovereign. God says, you know what? I have all power. I have all authority. I'll do whatever I want to. And if I want to make it that you have to believe, repent, confess, and be baptized, and that's when your sins are washed away, when you're baptized, guess what? God can do whatever yeah, he wants what to is. do. And you have two options. You can either say, God said it, I believe it. Or you can say, well, I don't like that. So let me run to a different passage that doesn't negate baptism, but just says faith. Well, of course, you have to have faith, right? Yeah. But that's what a lot of people do when they tear out the last page. And I'm talking about salvation mm -hmm. specifically, but you're right. Oh, There's, yeah. oh, man, I couldn't put number the amount <laughs> of stuff where people either, they want to basically tear out what God said so they can go further. They want to tear out what God said so they can not go as far. Or they just want to tear out what God said so they can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is there's a lot of people that do that. They say, God said this, but I don't like that. Because if that's true, then this person's wrong. My, my yeah. mom's wrong. My dad's wrong. My yeah. preacher's wrong. It doesn't matter if they're wrong or not. What the scripture says is what matters. You have to start from the place Off of the like, soapbox. I'll step down for a second. Oh, hey, the soap, soap's good. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Soap is yeah, good. Yeah, clean it up. So... <laughs> You have to start with a place of like, do you love God? You know, like kind of just like, do I love God? Do I really like, you know, if, if whatever he writes in this book, am I, um, you know, he loved me first. So, you know, do you love him that, enough to change? Do yeah. you love God enough to change something mm -hmm. that you maybe, maybe you believe that's possibly wrong? And you, like, you take that love for God and say, like you go to John 14, 15 and 15, 14, mm -hmm. it's like Jesus was saying like, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And then like in the next one, uh, 15, 14, like um, say, uh, you are my friends. Mm -hmm. If you do it, I command you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, okay, well, if I love God, then I'll keep them. Yeah. Um, and if I want to be his friend of the creator, you know, the son of God, and like, then I'll keep these. Um, it warns us so many times in scripture, like to stay in the doctrine, like to watch out for wolves that are coming, yeah. that people are going to come to try to divide up that you got Jesus's church, the church of Christ that belongs to him. Mm -hmm. And people are going to come and try to break that up and bring up divisions and bring out different gospels to hear the tickling of the ear, you know, yep. different, um, we have to pay, we have to be like be on guard, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. You just false teachers, wolves in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
you brought up the church. You know, we talk about the church of Christ and people, we need another episode on this in season two. What is the church of Christ? Um, people all the time think I'm saying leave your denomination, the Baptist denomination to become a church of Christ denomination. That misses the point. I'm saying when you read your Bible, the New Testament, you don't read about a denomination. Yeah, and it's like they think you're saying leave your leave your denomination and come be a part of ours because our denomination is better. No, no, that is yeah, not it that's at right. all. We're no, saying we, don't be a part of any denomination. Yeah, get rid of that idea completely. Yeah, just mm-hmm. go back to the New Testament. In the tear New, that out. Yeah, yeah, tear that part out. <laughs> if you got something that says be a part of a denomination, that's not in Scripture. If it's in your creed book, rip it out. Yeah, we want you to just be a member of the New Testament Church. Mm-hmm. And another thing is, I'll ask people too. I'll say, look. Do you believe that Jude 3 says the, the contend for the faith that was once delivered, right? For how long? All time. Do you believe that, right? We don't believe as the Mormon, some Mormon friends I have that I've studied with, some of the local guys, they believe that the Bible was corrupted and um, Joseph Smith had to be given a new revelation. I'll ask them what part's corrupted. And they don't know, right? I don't believe scripture has been corrupted at all. So we know scripture is for all time, it's sustained, right? Yeah. So I look at that and I say the, the faith has been once delivered for all, right? Well, what does that mean? If I teach something, it should be the same thing that they taught what? Yeah. Back then, then yeah. 2,000 years ago, yeah. when someone asked them, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe. Okay. If the person said, okay, Acts 16, 32, then they taught them the word of the Lord. I'll do the same thing. Acts 2, people who already believed, what must we do? Repent and be baptized. If your church, not trying to step on toes, right? I'm aiming for your heart. That's right. If somebody says, what must I do to be saved at the church, the congregation you're going to, Right. Is your preacher, your pastor, your leader's response, is it repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins? A majority of American, you know, Christian churches don't teach that. They teach, do you believe in Jesus? If you say yes, they teach what? They teach you to pray a prayer. That pray you can't a prayer. Find in the New you Testament. can't find that in the New Testament. Yeah, I'll say that again. I've said it before. Tucker will give you one thousand dollars if you <laughs> and Scott, Scott's money. <laughs> and Scott will give you Tucker and Scott will give you one thousand dollars if you can find somebody after Acts two which is when the yeah. new covenant Christianity went into effect, right? Some people say it went into effect after the death. Hebrews nine seventeen says covenants go into forth after men are dead. But Luke 24, 47 is after the resurrection. He still says that repentance and remission of sins, which according to Jeremiah 31 of the new covenant will begin, will start beginning in Jerusalem in Acts 2. Mm-hmm. So Acts 2, the new covenant goes into effect. After there, you'll never find anybody praying for salvation. You'll find a sinner, Paul, praying, but he wasn't forgiven. He wasn't forgiven until he arose and was baptized. Yeah. So if your answer to how to be saved is different than repent, believe, repent, be baptized, confessions in Romans 10, if you don't teach that, you're not teaching what the apostles taught and you're not teaching the same faith once delivered for all that you see in Jude chapter three. That's right. So, I mean, you can, t- you can do the same thing Jehoiakim did yeah. without taking a pen knife, without tearing out a page. You can do it just by reading over it and ignoring it. Yeah. You can do the same thing that he did, what, 3,000 years ago? Yeah, so test everything. First John yep. 4, 1. First, four, first John 4, 1, test the spirits because mm-hmm. many false prophets have gone out in the world. Yeah, watch yeah. out for the wolves. Yeah, there are wolves in sheep's clothing. And if you love God, you know, keep his words. That's right. That's right. Scott, concluding thoughts? we got 30 sec, 20 seconds. Yeah, I mean, I think we've said it well. Yeah. You, you know, take the whole Bible. Yeah. The, the sum of thy word is truth. Wrote, wrote with the psalmist. Psalm 119, 160. That's it. Yep. The sum. Yep. The totality. When yep. you add it all up together, that's when you find the truth. That's right. right. So parts here and parts leave, there. Don't tear out a page. Amen. Well said. Thank you for joining us on this authentic Christian podcast, Campfire Stories Edition. We'll see you back next time.